That's a nice list. And working with Drake, how was that? How did that even happen? I miss Drake. Like, yeah, he a cool dude. You know what I'm saying? He like, right. he real observant. You know what I'm saying? He right. said a lot. So, you know, I, I already messed with him for a minute. Got like, it. Like, what's this year? 2008, in 2017. Oh, okay. So this has so been in a long time. Me, like, like, 2018, we're going to make it happen, but we made it happen for real. Did you think it was going to be that successful? Nah, like, I never, you know, I know I don't know nothing about this. So, right. you know, I can't even think this far, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I ain't no way I thought about, it. like, this is successful, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. A moment that we all got to see that we all really, really loved was you and Drake mm -hmm. just yeah. putting it to rest, coming on stage together. What was that moment like for you? Uh, it was exciting. Me and him actually been in contact probably for, like, a year before. But me, I'm, like, more into, like, the real way. Like, and I don't really like to say, like, Everybody's stuck on I'm a real one, the real, the real thing. But just like the natural way, like everybody's trying to get us, all right, y'all, we yeah. gonna get y'all to meet up, this, that, and the third. I might not be ready for that. He might not be ready for that. So when we both was ready for that, we already was in contact. And then he had a tour going on. If it would have been my tour, I would have tried to plan it the, the same, same way. So. But he, he had a tour going on, and we linked up and just like, all right, we gonna do it. And Boston happened to be the place. We like, we gonna come out and get it. And we just represent Building Bridges. It's 2019. Yeah, man. When it comes to Trip at Night, and, and I'm glad we had a lot of conversation before I landed here. Right. The betrayal record with Drake. Yes. When you hear this record, do you already know? Because I was listening to the album. I didn't go to betrayal. You know what I'm saying? Because I thought that's where everybody was going to probably land anyway. You right. know, and, and the way that I listen to it is I like to go just from one on. Mm -hmm. Then I go one, two on. Then I try to find what I'm listening for. And and I listen to lyrics. And what I love about the album as well is that you put in a, is it an official lyric video in there? Because they be messing lyrics yeah, up. Yeah, no, 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 no. I made sure they, they knew the lyrics on this one. I think yeah. they only messed up like on two lyrics. Okay, because bro, time. do you ever go on the internet and read your own lyrics? <laughs> and be like, I didn't say that. Yeah. Like put a cow in my ass. ass. <laughs> I didn't put no cow in my ass. How <laughs> <laughs> like, did I say I put a cow in my ass, man? Bro. You know, <laughs> I said cow passed over here. Like, I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> but but yeah, so when you get betrayal, are you and Drake in the studio together? No, nah, we sent that over. Okay, so when he sends it over to you and you hear the actual lines. Do you know that it's gonna it's gonna be 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 that one that everybody pay attention to more so? Um, yeah, you know I felt like that just because it was Drake anyway. Yeah. Hell yeah! So it wasn't even really. You like Drake could have said. Bruh, I swear that's what I said. Be like, man, I got a Drake, I got a Drake feature. Like, what does he say? <laughs> it's just something like. It's a bucket list thing for right. me. When I you really when you get that music, though, so. do you go yes? <laughs> oh yeah, I was yeah. tired. Yeah. Was How long happy. are you sitting on that before you release it? Oh, I just had got that. Like we were sending music back and forth trying to figure it out. And like I got that last minute to mm -hmm. add to the album. You was like you was like immediately, huh? <laughs> immediately. Yeah, that's not one of those like do it make it. You like, where do I put it? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm talking to Drake one time and uh we having a conversation and he's telling me about you know, just going into the strip club and he's like having this casual conversation with me. And he's like, one day, you know, I go to the I go to the strip club, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I, I threw like a hundred, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't nothing crazy, you know? But then, you know, then these other guys walked in there and they and they threw 30,000 and they just made it look like they threw a hundred, you know? And they didn't really throw a hundred, you know? Like, and I'm sitting here like, this nigga's rich. <laughs> First of all, Drake, man, is an amazing person. Mm. It's my brother and, um, He's, he's really supported me a lot in my career, you know? And I met Drake, obviously, through Young Money. Mm. Lil Wayne and the whole family. And, you know, when he first came in the game, I reached out to him immediately uh, to do a record. And we did a record um, with me, Usher, Jay-Z, Drake. Um, it was called Fed Up. Bro, know? I think that's why Drake is the best, because he, he sees every wave. And he's so good, he goes, not like he's riding away for this or that. It's like, that's what you do. You know, if you want to stay the best, you want to stay relevant. But he, like, puts his own twist. I mean, think about, like, best I ever had, Drake. And then think about God's plan. 
and everything in between. It's just been a complete evolution of music and he's always been ahead of the curve. You know what I mean? So it's like to be able to look and see the little homies and what they're on and be like, oh, okay. And not only is Drake going to be like, I fuck with that vibe that inspires me. I'm going to fuck with you too and put you on this shit. You know what I mean? That's like really commendable and extremely respectful. He did like eight bars. And this is when he had his mixtape out. Mm. And I wanted him so bad. I knew he was going to be the next biggest thing. And his buzz was getting big, but I just knew this kid was special. And he agreed to do it. And we just ever since built a relationship. And mm. he has respect for me. He always told me that he always listened to my music, you know, before he became mm. the big Drake. I told Drake that, uh, you know, I need a re I need a record for the documentary too. And uh, when I went in thinking, you know, I, you know what I get lost in translation because uh, Drake likes Drake does all his, you know, all his biggest records like um, in the beginning were, you know, like geared towards women. So whatever you think Drake, you're like, yo, let me go to Drake and get a radio single real quick. And then when I went to Drake, he was like, yo, man, I don't want to give you that. I want to do some hip hop, you know, something cool, something real. And uh, so we got, uh, you know. The 100 beat and we just went in man and that song was done in like 30 minutes too man and we was out of there yeah hey yo all day man drake just kept saying man i can't believe i'm on black wall street man i can't believe i'm in compton man I, this is dope he was like i was you know a kid in toronto just one like be there and now i'm here so i think he had more fun than anybody else man but you know the hood really embraced him and uh you know we got in and got out and everything was dope man 100 was dope man and drake is dope he a dope artist and uh he the homie man he lived down the street man we be chilling man we have pool parties and everything man phone pits you gotta come what i love about drake is he he cares about me and he cares about me winning mm. and you don't find many people like that mm. you know what i'm saying and i have the same love back for him meaning as in i respect him as an artist mm. i think he's one of the greatest meaning as in for our time like i, I put him up there with all the great ones mm. You also did a song with Drake for his recent mixtape on Company. You performed a bit of it, which is a cool track. How did that come together? Man, it's one of them mother <laughs> man. <laughs> like, like, you know, I just, we went over to his crib one day when I was, I was just working on my album. And, you know, I just played him like a couple songs off my shit. And, um, but like my shit's all over the place, like, like, I just, I don't like making bounces of any of my songs until like, I f finish or whatever. He says, f them. And like, before I left, he was like, yeah, I want to just give you this joint and whatever. So uh, he gave it to me on the USB and I didn't listen to it for like a day. Uh, and then I was like, oh my God, like, cause I was like, Trip was like, I got this joint. So um, I worked on it and shit. And um, it was literally the last day before his album was about to come out that I turned my verse in. Like literally. What? And you made it that tight? Yeah, literally. Like, he'll tell you. <laughs> That's quick turnaround. It was like a skim of like a minute. <laughs> you work fast. I'm so serious. It was like my last day in LA kind of type of shit. My last, like, I was just like, I gotta get this. I wanted it to be so ill, man. But I feel like when I got it, I got it. <laughs> like, I tried it so many times. And when I got it, I got it, though. What's this relationship with you and Drake? Drake, let me, let me, let me finish. Drake is possibly the hardest person to get in touch with. And let's be clear. Every song he does goes number one. And he's just like the Michael Jackson of this time. And I've watched him say, yo, I have to call up Ross because I ain't hear no Ross music. And I'm, I like to hear Ross music. <laughs> what kind of shit is this? I'm just asking you, yo, Rose, what is your true relationship with Drake? What is like, what is it that this man, he loves you, man? No, nah, the, the love is genuine. And it's been like that for shit close to a decade now since he came in the game. You know, I, that's one thing that I'm sure several people will let you know is even when um, I may have been the hottest at the time, I never love homie none of the young niggas coming up. You know what I'm saying? When Drake was just getting on the team, being in Miami, needed a record, I, I moved for him the same way I moved for Weezy. I moved for a young nigga trapping in Liberty City for a verse. Sam Sneak just hit me. What's the little homie name? Tafia. Tafia. 
Sam Sneak just hit me. Oh, that's my man. Nice to go. Up with Tafia. Yeah, brother. Yeah. Oh no, beautiful guy. You know what I mean? Sam Tafia Sneak just hit me. Just hit good. me. Just hit me about homie wanting the record, and I knocked his shit out like you know, like a big boy. And that's how I always. No, Tafia's a good dude. I was with him locked up. You know what I mean? Good dude. And so shit, it's like hey, it's been vice versa. God, son, when I called you to do the. The song for him, you sent it right back the next day. Rest in peace, Fred the Godson. Better the believe it. Better believe it. Rest in peace to the homie. But that's how that's how a genuine nigga do it. Even when you're on top of the game, nigga, you got everything in the world you can motherfucking ask for. A little nigga hit you and you move for him like he was motherfucking home. That's how it and come back around. That's how it come back around. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it was. When he was, he was coming up, you embraced him with mad love. And he never forgot that. He never forgot that. You know, Drake done pulled up to the crib with Rolexes, brand new Rolexes for me, different gifts, different. So the love is genuine between us. You know what I'm saying? And shit, we just spoke a couple nights ago. So you know how we rock it. Uh, but you come in with a verse where you say, I got a couple of mansions, but I still don't have any manners. You got a couple of goat writers, but to these kids, it don't actually matter. What the fuck happened to hip hop? What's going on with hip hop? People took that line and thought you were uh, indirectly talking about Drake. No, see, here's the thing. I saw, and I saw that too. Yeah. Drake is always going to be in my good graces because he did something for, for one of my daughters that I will never forget. And he will always be in my graces with that. And I like Drake. Mm -hmm. What I'm telling you with these lines is I don't know what's real and what's not at, at this point. You know what I'm saying? Because you hear shit about this rapper, that rapper, whatever. I'm telling you that I don't do it, mm -hmm. never have, and never will. If I ever need a ghostwriter, I need to just fucking put the mic down. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's my personal belief. As far as anybody out here that, that does use ghostwriters, that's fine. That's if that's what you do, that's fine. But yeah. I'm telling you, I don't do it. But this shows you that God is hilarious. <laughs> Why? God, you know, there's one gate, there's two gates, or there's three gates, but there's two main gates when you're with houses at the end of the cul-de-sac. Mm. One gate goes, and my house is at the end of the cul-de-sac. Who else's house do you think is at the end of the other cul-de-sac of the gate? The name of the gate is their house at the end of the cul-de-sac. The name of the gate is my house at the end of the cul-de-sac. What other rapper do you think? I don't know. Help me out. I'm trying to work out where okay. the cul-de-sac is. Yeah, okay. Go so God is funny. Yeah. Drake right. lives, oh, four literally. Blocks, lives four blocks down the street from Got it, got it, got it. So that shows you that God has like, got a sense of humor. The Why? Because he's the polar opposite of, what, of where you're at? No, no. It's just because there was a rivalry. For oh, right, 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 right. Now... Liberals love art, mm -hmm. right? And now I am unquestionably, undoubtedly, the greatest human artist of all time. So if you're in a situation now where you're able to, 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 you want to mend that, you want to bring those things together, starting with the relationships in your life, are you able to do that? With the, with the friendships that have, that, have, that have deviated, you talk about the rivalry with Drake, you talk about this public fallout with people who you've shared a really valuable part of your life with, Jay-Z, people like that. Are you able to mend that? Is this putting you on a path of recovery in personal relationships as much as it is in your own relationship with yourself? Absolutely. You cannot be in service to God mm. and be mad at your brother. Have you started that process? Next door. Mm. Yeah, I go to Drake's house. Just I walk over there with no security and just uh, <laughs> leave my phone number. Here's my cell. But I, you know, I'm not trying to ring the doorbell and say, oh, you gotta, you gotta come out mm. side right now. He might be busy. Mm -hmm.